Hi, this is Danielle with the William Grant Still Art Center. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own camera obscura using tins from a coffee can. Camera obscura is Latin for dark room and it is an optical device consisting of a darkened chamber with a small circular or pinhole opening that allows a small amount of light to pass through it and show images. So here's how it works. You have a real life object. So in this image, I'm gonna use a candle. You have a real world object that we're going to project through the camera obscura so that we can see it in a new way, in a new perspective. This device helps artists, it helps scientists compose images and take a 3D object like a candle and put it flat, put it onto a plane. It's um, onto a flat plane. So in the camera obscura, which is a dark room, you have um, a small window. This is a black, a black window. No light passes through except for where that dot is, where the gold dot is. That's called the pinhole camera or the aperture. That is the only place where light can pass through. So the light rays, which travel straight, are um, travel through this small space and are refracted by the lens within the camera obscura. That is the plastic part, that is the clear part. It is something that also allows light to um, refract or bounce off of it. So once it enters, once the light through this aperture, through this pinhole point, enters this dark room, this is how the camera works. The light is refracted, meaning it bounces and just like a basketball, when it bounces, it changes direction. So this is why you see the image again, but this time it's going to be inverted. It's going, meaning that it has flipped. So you're projecting the same image. You're seeing the image projected by the light. And um, in, this, in this case, it's flipped. And this is how basically how a camera obscure works and how a camera, including your iPhone camera, works. I'm going to watch this video by National Geographic to see how you can turn an entire room into a camera obscura. Uh, camera obscura is a dark room, uh, any size, that has an opening looking out into the world. Uh, through that opening, an upside down image of the outside actually gets projected on the back of that room. It's a very simple physical uh, process. Camera obscuras, as well as cam regular cameras and the camera on your iPhone, use lenses to refract light and produce an image. In a camera, this would be developed onto photosensitive paper, and that's how you get a photograph. And on your phone, it's put onto your digital camera in the same way, by reflecting light through the lens. This fishbowl is demonstrating how a lens works. Um, in that it's clear and it acts as the surface by which the light rays hit and then are refracted and reproduce the same image that you see in real life. Now that we understand how a camera obscura works, we're going to make our own. We'll be using coffee cans for this project. They should be the same size and you should keep the lids if they come with one. We'll also be using tape, a hammer, and a small nail scissors, an exacto knife, black construction paper, and something translucent like shrink wrap or a plastic bag. Take a look at your coffee can. Again, they should be about the same size. Remove the caps and make sure that they're cleaned out and there's nothing inside of them. Step one, we're going to measure and trim both sheets of black construction paper to fit within each coffee can. So I'm measuring right here. I made a mark where um, it, go, it overflows 
I'm now going to cut that area so that um, it's going to fit neatly inside the can. And then once you do that, go ahead and just roll it up and it will automatically unfurl and stay a place inside the can. You don't need to tape or glue anything. Repeat these steps with your next can. You can use your previous construction paper as a guide as you do the same thing with this one. Voila! Next, we're going to be making our lens for our camera obscuras. If you don't have a translucent lid, use a plastic bag like I'm doing in this image um, to, make, to make your lid instead. So what you're going to do is cut off the top of the bag, the Ziploc part, and you're going to um, fit it over the open part of your can. Now, once you get it um, to a good size, and it looks like it's going to be fitted, go ahead and cut it down if you need to a little bit. Um, once you do that, you're going to start taping it. Now, in order for this to work, it needs to be really taunt meaning that it is um, flat and smooth like a drum, like the top of a drum. So go ahead and tape either side of each can, each um, corner down of, um, of your plastic bag, and keep taping it until it's completely flat at the top. There's no ridges, none of it, none of the plastic bag is sticking up. Um, Make sure that it's flat against your can as well. Continue taping it until it's completely flat. See, like this. This is what I'm talking about. Go ahead and trim also if you have any excess um, parts as well because you're not going to need them and it's better to keep it neat. Next, go ahead and flip over your can and now we're going to be putting in our pinhole apparatus. So get a tiny nail, a really tiny nail. This is going to be small. And just go ahead and hammer it into the middle of um, the bottom of your can. G do this gently. Get adult assistance if you need it. And yeah, go ahead. See how small that is? That's how small you're going to want um, the pinhole to be for it to work effectively. Once you're done, go ahead and pick up your second can. And you're going to use a can opener to open up the bottom of it so that it's completely open. Um, so... Ask for help if you need it, but you can just use a, a regular can opener from your kitchen. Just gently take it off. Um, I used an X-Acto knife because it wasn't completely coming off, so I had to trim the cardboard a little bit. So I just ripped that off there. And then you should be able to see completely through your coffee can. Next, you're going to take both sides and put them together. Your lens needs to be in the middle. So the plastic bag part, the part that is clear, is in the middle of um, the two cans. The two ends should be completely, um, one end should be open and the other should have your pinhole. So go ahead and put them together and there's your pinhole. Use a pretty strong tape for this. Um, afterwards, you're going to go ahead, I put construction paper just to decorate mine so that it looks kind of um, like one, one almost like a telescope. So if you have some construction paper or markers or paint, you can also decorate your, um, your camera obscura. It doesn't have to be plain. This is what I did. It's the construction paper. I used two different types and just um, fashioned it with electrical tape. So I'm going to show you how to make a smaller lens um, with the cap from one of the cans because I messed up and made it too big. I made my aperture, I made my pinhole way too big the first time. I'm going to show you later why it's a big deal if your pinhole isn't small. So what I did is I just used the cap, the clear cap, and um, the part of the coffee felt of the coffee can that you take off. Normally it's, um, it's kind of, you can also use foil here, and I just ripped that off. I put that, I glued, I, um, taped it to the cap so that it would replicate the foil inside um, inside the can as well, the aluminum. I taped it to the back and then in the back I put a tiny teeny tiny hole. Um, so when I used my nail originally this is how big the hole was. Look how big that is. It's about um, the size of my thumb and it almost works more like a viewfinder. So it's, it's way too big so you can see the plastic in there. Look how big that is. You do not want yours to be this big. I'm going to show you why in a little bit. 
but this is the smaller cap that I made. See how small that is? It's just the tip, 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 tip of a nail. So I made that small little hole that's over the tape and um, because I blocked out the rest of the lens with the foil with this um, kind of metal metallic paper, it's completely covered, it's completely sealed, and it's going to work just like um, a pinhole camera would. See, this is what it looks like inside. It's really dark, it's completely dark. So this is um, what you would do to, to use your camera obscure. You'd go outside. It has to be sunny outside. It has to be bright. And then take a, I used a jacket, but you can use a blanket or something to completely cover yourself and cover the camera. And then look around. Use it like you would a telescope or binocular and look through the large opening. And you can see the images projected against your plastic bag. And like I said, it's going to be inverted. This is, with my iPhone, what my um, front yard looks like. So this is what I'm going to be looking through with my camera obscura. So again, this is the bigger apparatus. This is what it's going to look like when we look through our bigger apparatus. I um, use the larger aperture. And as you can see, you're not really seeing much. You can see the colors. Um, the colors are reflected, the lights are reflected, but too much light is getting through. We can't see much with this. Now with the smaller one, when we look through this one in our camera obscura, look closely. Um, you see those, those images? You'll see a lot better when you look through your own. Those are all the palm trees in my yard. So you can actually see what's outside inverted and projected through the camera obscura. So... Go ahead and play with yours, look around, think about how you can make 2D images using this device. And of course, don't forget to clean up when you're done. This wasn't a really messy project, but we still, there's a lot of little things and we want to make sure that our area is clean. So keep looking on William Grant Still's page for more ideas for projects. Um, and have a great day, everyone.